I'm so excited about this Bible. I've actually seen several pages of it. And I mean, because they, they, they sent them to me, I printed them out, I showed Polly, I said, look at this. And so it's so different from anything I've ever seen. How, how did the idea come about in the first place? Well, honestly, it wasn't our idea. Um, several of the people in this room, I said, have sort of coerced it, I think. Um, and at first we said, oh, we're not theologians. You know, the, and all the homecoming artists said, well, I'm not, I, you know, I can't write a commentary on the Bible. And then we got together and listened to what they all had in mind. And it was um, just regular people telling where the scripture hit the road for them, where the tire hits the pavement. And, and I, I keep thinking about um, that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And I think for regular people, and we are all very regular people, say, saying what the word of God has done in a regular day is what you are talking about, telling the truth. And I think there's power in that. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be telling everybody that I know somebody who wrote the Bible. So. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. But, that, but, you know, reading some of it, because I read some, uh, some of the commentary that you had, uh, and I read some of the commentary, I think, that Becky Isaacs wrote. And um, I, I was just... Is that a lifetime of living that you because you see things differently, and that's what that's how I've made my living. That's how I've made my mark is is seeing things that other people don't see. And when I'm around you guys, you hear things other people don't hear. You see things other people don't see. And I think that's what's going to be a huge value in this Bible. And so, I mean, how did you how did you decide which commentaries to do? I mean, which ones you were going to take and which ones you were going to assign to other people? You ask, how do we assign? We didn't assign. And that's driving the, this editorial staff crazy because we just said to the artists, you know, would you write, uh, would you write some real life experiences here? Where's, where's Sonia? I mean, do you, none of these people really consider, consider we, we're not Andy Andrews, right? We're not great writers. I mean, everybody said, oh, I don't know if I can write for the Bible. And, I, and we said, yes, if the Bible has crossed your trail, right. just tell us that. There is some, something wonderful about what's happening as we do this Bible that is so real. Mixed in that is, um, are some things that have outlived us all, which help us. I mean, do you go to people that have outlived you when you're writing a book? Do you say... You know, do you read other literature? Do you, right. do you right. fill up on Shakespeare or Longfellow or somebody that informs your writing? Um, we, we find that we have to go, for all of us that are singers, we go to old hymns. We go to great lyrics. We go to wonderful poetry. We, we sing, so I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Um, we all have to find somebody smarter than us to, than we. Than we. Smarter than we two, are. Two English teachers get together, boy. <laughs> to, to inform um, our, our daily lives. So this is not a Bible of authorities that tell us what we should think. This is a Bible full of real people confessing how the Bible has informed a very, very regular, everyday I think the thing that drew me was the power of the poetry, the power of the drama, of the story of the gospel, and most of the time it found its way into a, 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 into a song. And then later on in college life, when I learned about all the different other philosophies of the world, I said, hey, cool, there's some good things in all of this. But the thing that drew me to it was, was the mystic presence of Jesus that somehow found its way into a gospel song. Hey, let me ask you a question I think, I think a, a lot of us would like to hear, and, or hear the answer to. And, and that is, if you could choose one thing that he has done, you know, professionally, one, one thing that he has written, one thing, and, and maybe it wasn't the one that sold the most or the one that got the most acclaim, but if you could choose one thing that he did that you are most proud of, what would it be? And if you could 
look at glorious body of work. And there was one thing that you said. Well, I'm, glad boy, you, I'm glad you didn't say glorious body. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, know, you know what I'm saying? To say, to say of all those things, because I, I look, I'm always amazed at Bill and Gloria, and I'll be the funny one, if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm always amazed at Bill and Gloria because I watch, I watch what, what happens around them, and I, I listen to the words when I'm there, and, and I, I have an inkling of what it feels like when the Holy Spirit comes down and puts something in you, and to, to see that happen over and over again with you. I'm just curious what you think about each other. What do you think is his best, and what do you think is her best? I think Bill's best gift is to sense um, a hole, you know, that needs to be filled. Right. And I think that has probably motivated our writing more than anything else is, you know, we're always in a service someplace or we're in a context, whatever. It's a movie maybe. And, and we like, boy, there should be a song for that. You know, there isn't one. Um, and then he does the same, I think, his greatest gift, and, and um, I'm looking here at the Isaacs, and I think they see it every night. There isn't a word for what he does. He calls it programming, but it's way more than that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It oh, is. Yeah. There isn't really a word in professional music for what he does. But he, he is able to take what any one artist does and put it in a platinum setting so that we are all better together than we are separately and and weave he weaves a whole evening that turns out to be an experience and it doesn't work very well who people with people who want to be stars it doesn't work pe very well with people who arrive with agents and you know people to say can i get my biggest hit on the program tonight and you know i got to have 20 minutes to do this certain thing that you know i've got a new release or something and you mentioned a while ago when you were introducing the, the, the trust that these people have put in us and especially in him at that point to know that if they lay down their lives and their talent and don't demand that they get a certain thing, I'm not doing it with this microphone, that, that what will happen will be better than they thought. And that's what he does. I don't know, you know, you're right, it's never the same every night. It's never because the, same. the audience is different, the town is different, the buildings are sometimes wonderful, sometimes they're a nightmare. Um, you know, I'm but not, I'm not trying to be funny when I say this, but the only person I can compare Bill to is Johnny Carson. Yeah. You know, because Carson was one of these guys, he was not, he was not the funniest comedian you ever saw. But boy, he made everybody else so much better. And nobody has filled that hole on television since, since he's been gone. And, and so he truly, I mean, you're right. It's, it's amazing that you would pick that rather than a song. Rather than a song, because you even, know I, you know, he's you know a good I, hook writer you know for what? a song. I'm going to go out and buy a ticket the next time I'm in town to go see me. You should. You should. <laughs> so what about her? What about her, Bill? She has a, she really has a genius. Uh, you know, I, you know I'll, I'll come in with ideas and I'm all over the place. I'm like, a, I'm like a goose. I wake up in a new world every day and it's always great, you know, but come with all kind of ideas. Uh, uh, but but she, has, she has a great ability of focusing the idea. And, and you know, some preachers can have an idea and they got 30 minutes or 45 minutes to develop it. A songwriter in three or four minutes has to take the idea and take it home somewhere. And and, I, and 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 we could talk all night about songs, but I, but I want to I want to talk about two uh, about two here quickly. But it takes what I call a a a skillful person. Is there a better word for the, for that? I mean, it's, to hone it down in just a few words. I mean, I mean when you can th think of the power of we sh simple so song like "We shall overcome," "We shall overcome," "We shall overcome," someday wasn't a whole lot of words, but it was words that took the audience somewhere. I, a simple little a second or two, like reach out and touch somebody's hand and make this a world a better place. If, it seems simple. Uh, I will 
always love you. Yeah, how about I will always, <laughs> you, you know. But the ability to take an idea and, and, and distill it down in just a few, few little seconds is, is, is a powerful thing. Uh, we got a lot of songs that, of course, I'm, that I'm very proud of. But we did a song called It Is Finished. The first verses talked about the historical, or about the crucifixion of Christ and the words, it is finished, they said on the cross. We wanted to go further, but, but we said, okay, what does that have to do with us? It's all finished. We know what salvation's plan is, but what does that have to do with us on Monday and Tuesday when I've got to work with a guy I really don't like? And for whatever reason, this ain't working, but I have to show up every day with some kind of good attitude. So in her brilliance, she came up with this. Yet in my heart, the battle was raging. Not all prisoners of war had come home. These were battlefields of my own making. I didn't know that the war had been won. How many, are, how many people you know are fighting a war that's already been won? You know? Then I heard that the king of the ages had fought all the battles for me, and victory was mine for the claiming. And now, praise his name, I am free. It is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There'll be no more war. So I would hope in these discourses that we have with this Bible that people will read the crucifixion story and say, there's more. There's another chapter. And that chapter applies to me on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Can I tell you that Gloria and I are totally overwhelmed by this? All we wanted to do was write a little song. We didn't start out, you know, people, you give us a lot more credit than, 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 what, than what we deserve. But to be honored like this to, for a major company to take their resources and, and the words I heard, this is going to be our major thrust for this spring. Or, and I said, you serious? I mean, because we've been in the music field, or I have, uh, most of our life. I asked Gloria that day, honey, in your wildest dreams, did you ever think that, you know, that we would ever be in a place like this? To what she said, honey, you were, you were never in my wildest dreams. <laughs> so, so, wow. 